Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Circle Points infographic tutorial. And I have quite a lot of stuff on the screen right now. <laughs> uh, my colors to my right hand side, this gradient which is a smooth blue gray to a white to a lighter blue gray. And I have a world map here. And I have to um, these circles on my left hand side. These circles are just for reference so I get this size correct for this tutorial and these two lines right here. Okay then let's get straight into it. And we will notice first thing that this canvas is actually different. Let me just resize it to this. I think I find it easier when I do that. And that's because we're gonna have the world on here so we'll need the length so it's actually going to take on the exact size of what you see in the in the thumbnail, and it is eight six nine by that's correct yeah eight six nine by four eight nine millimeters. Um, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to get the background in first. So this is a picture that I took off the internet for the world. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to our object. Or is it? Yeah, our object and it should be here. If not, it should be in path. And path. And we're going to trace this bitmap. We're just going to keep the default settings as they are, making sure that brightness cutoff is selected. And then we're going to press OK. And this will vectorize any bitmap that has a high concentration value. So because this is black on white, which is the highest concentration value that you can get, it's easier for the tool to pick up the outline of the edges and to create us a map. So it's a vector now with many nodes. Um, if the nodes are a bit too much for your computer to handle, I believe you can go to path and simplify and that will bring down the node count for you so that it's easier for you to manage. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to move on to making this a stripey pattern across like you see in the thumbnail. And for that, you're gonna create a rectangle. And this is a thin rectangle. Try and make sure that it's longer than the map itself. Right here, I got it, it's just longer. And you want to draw another line. This is a bezier. And you want to make sure that this bezier is longer in width than the map. Good. And you want to make sure that the bezier is below the rectangle. So we're going to hold shift and select both of them. Go to extensions, go to generate path. And we're going to go to pattern along path. And we want to make sure that the copies is repeated, the formation is snake, and the space is free between the copies and apply. We'll get right here. I'm going to delete these two, and we'll get our patterns right here. And if it's too many pat too many lines, so you can increase the space between copies to like a five or so. All right. Next, we're going to click it again, and we're going to get the rotation on skew handles. And then I'm going to skew this to the right about here. I'm going to bring this over. In fact, let's select this first and put this on top. Bring the map on top just for easy seeing. It's a bit dazzling on the eyes, but you can draw it out to kind of help you out with that. And then I'm going to select both of them and go to path and union. So path and um, intersect. And we get our map right here. Next, we're just going to use a dropper tool with D, or you can activate the dropper tool here. I'm going to select right in the corner right here to get this map, and this adds a nice corporate feel to the whole graphic. Okay, next we're going to play about with our circles. So we're going to add the biggest circle first. Let's just drop this underneath and then lift this up one so all the circles are above it. And we're going to put our first circle about here, right over South America. Our second circle is going to go to the tip of South Africa. And our third circle is going to cover 
the Middle East and Egypt and Ethiopia and then our next circle is going to go to Spain and covering more of the European nations and our last circle is going to go way up here I'm not sure the country up here is it Finland? I think it's Finland you can always correct me if I'm wrong my map skills are my map skills aren't perfect but it's somewhere up here maybe closer to say Germany or such on on first look so we've got our positions here we're just gonna color them in accordance to how we had them colored before let me just check that's purple that's dark purple red orange and yellow at the end okay for the next step let me just I'm going to take this orange duplicate it bring it across here and we're going to give it a space in between and then we're going to take this purple duplicate it right here and we're just going to match them up we duplicate with Control D by the way you can go to edit and duplicate right here and we have ourselves a shape where they're all touching and this looks good enough it's going to select all of them go to path and union and then we're going to go to path and break apart and that will give us the middle so with the break apart now we can scale it up and down and we can skew it and do all sorts of things so we're going to use the first one that we have here i'm just going to let's bring it down a bit so we're just going to activate our scales and we're going to pull up a bit and then we're just going to bring it here and we're going to put it underneath and that's our first one Going to duplicate it and then we're going to increase the size of it slightly and we're going to move on to the red and the orange and then we're basically on a trial and error journey right here not to get it too big not to get it too small and we're going to put it underneath in our toolbox control options let's make this red but let's put this underneath the orange and we're going to duplicate it one more time um always make sure that you're saving along the way with control and s i mean that's a a no-brainer but and something that you should know after some time and but it's also very useful I'm just going to increase the size of it and you know every now and again you get a crash on Inkscape not very often but it's always good to be prepared and um, better safe than sorry right, I'm incrementing holding control so that it increments in a fixed amount and that helps to control your rotation a bit better and anticipate how much of a rotation you're going to achieve via each turn. All right, and I'm gonna make this purple. And lastly, for the last one, which is the biggest one, rotate it and see if we can scale this up in fact let's carry it down a bit and squish it out and then we're going to rotate it and this should come here so it ends up looking like a chain link and we're going to make this purple so we've got our chain link almost looks like the steam logo let's move about we can even increase the size a little bit and this is the basic structure of our graphic. Oh wow, it looks like I forgot to 
Put the icons in the middle. So I can take the icons from the other one. Okay, with this now. Let's see if we can bring this down a bit of opacity. It's a little bit heavy. Okay, uh, that looks great. Okay, now we can fine tune a little bit. And if you see nodes that are out of place, you can just go ahead and fix them. This is a tutorial for me, so I'm going to be very crude. And uh, like I've said on many occasions, this is for you. This is a tutorial where I have to go quickly, but you can take your time and make sure that the edges line up nicely and these sort of things. Good. So next, we're going to create the shadows here. Activate our gradient tool, or you can press G. I'm just going to make sure that the linear gradient is activated and pull down. Good. Then we're going to use our dropper tool and select the adjacent orange. Making sure that this last node is blue, we're going to move on to our R to our fill and stroke dialog box. If you don't have it open, then you can go to object and fill and stroke. And when I activate the hue, saturation, and lightness tab or color slider mode, and we're just going to decrease the lightness down to get something that we're comfortable with. This looks good. And then we're going to repeat this for all of the four links. Bring the lightness down. And then let's repeat with the gradient or G. Bring the lightness down. Make sure you set this, bring the lightness down. And this one, this last one, bring the lightness down good all right for the next part we're actually going to duplicate each circle get the bezier tool and cut across the circle you can act, go to here to activate the bezier tool and you're going to draw a line i hold control to get the increment and so they cuts it loosely i think this is a good cut Make good cut and we're going to select both of them and go to path and division and then the top half I'm going to make it slightly dark we can select within this gradient to get the dark level that you want you can even play about a bit of it I'm going to delete the other section so that we have a bit more control and you'll have time to do this much nicer than I have I'll just take my, I'll just have to rush it through. I think we went this side on this one, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna flip it, make sure it's on this side, and um, that's it. He did say on this side, was it here? Yeah, something like this. Let's check it. Well, it's the other direction, but this looks good too, so. And what you can do is that you can duplicate this and just scale it down for each one. Holding control and shift each time, selecting within the gradient, or you can cut each one depending on your tastes and what you're more comfortable with. Uh, this one is slightly quicker, so I'm just going to go ahead holding control and shift and scaling down each time. Uh, yeah. And for the last one, scale down. And um, so you have to use the dropper tool. Select the yellow and carry it down a bit. I don't like how the yellow carries down, so just adding a bit of orange. Okay, so it's looking really good. And um, really good so the next part of it now is that we're going to add our icons and our text okay looking on this one it looks like they did the shadow in the opposite direction let me just check it yeah we did the colors in the opposite direction but both of them look good still so 
it's not a problem you can definitely take your time and get more of the effect shell looks both great in both directions Mm -hmm. It's great in both directions. And you can decide how that goes. So, we're going to add our last bit, which is a little drop shadow. And there we have it. Our circle points. Infographic. The icons will be in the description in the blog post underneath the de in the description if you like this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you want to see more tutorials like this leave a message in the accompanying blog post i'd appreciate that if you have a question about this tutorial leave it in the blog post i think that's a better place to leave it easier for my head to compute and if you yeah, yeah if you have any queries just leave it in the blog post so until we we see each other again, get up and design a new dawn. Later.